Hello and welcome to Heritage Farm Contractors. This is episode 6 and we are into the month of April. Let's have a look and see what sort of contracts we've got going. Um, fertilizing, I think we've worked out that that is now going to be a fairly easy job to do. And also a little bit later in this video I'll show you how to reduce the fertilizer costs. Right, so let's get these fertilizing contracts active. And we'll do a weeding contract as well. We'll do two weeding contracts, I think. Yeah, so we, because we've got access to more workers now, we can do um, a few more contracts at the same time. When we first started, we could only do Oh, I think three. I think we can go up to about six now. So I don't want to do the really small value ones just yet until we've run out of other options. Right, so as soon as we're going to have to do weeding, we're going to have to get some more equipment. So we need to get ourselves a weeder. What's that one? That's 2.5 meters. That's three meters. Um, yeah, 40 horsepower, could easily do that one. And this one is 35 horsepower. Yeah, so this it looks like it. It's got a slightly wider width. Yeah, still going to take a long time to do weeding on this. Right, there it is in all its glory. I think we'll put it on the Massey and see if the Massey can pull it. Just got to get through and find out where the Massey is. There it is. There. Get this down to the well, down to the farm basically, to the equipment delivery area, and we'll pick that up. We could pick that up, pick the wheat up. Oh dear. Chickens are doing okay. We did um, off camera add some more feed into the chickens so they're fairly happy. I think in the next month or so we'll have our first pallet of eggs to sell. That'll be the first thing that we've actually produced ourselves. <laughs> well, I mean, we're not in the, in the physical production. We're in the business of, of producing, we're in the business of establishing a museum and um, doing some uh, contracting work to fund it. So the museum is our main aim. Although this um, weeder is not antique, certainly is vintage. And I guess there's going to be the occasional piece of equipment where we're not going to be able to find something vintage or antique, but um, yeah, I would say this weeder is a little bit more modern than the tractor, let's put it that way. But um, yeah, of course we are strictly limited by the by the horsepower of the, the equipment that we have. Well, the mess is carrying it okay. The mess has struggled a little bit with um, with anything that is connected to it, so this will be interesting to see if it can handle this in the in the actual um, act of weeding. We're soon going to find out. I was considering just putting the Massey out to, just for show, um, maybe at the front of the farm, um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Let's see if it does this at the correct speed of about seven miles an hour. Then, yeah, it is struggling. Let's look at it. I mean, it's a slight little uphill, but it's not. It's not much. Can't really see where you're going weeding here. Well, where you've weeded, should I say? It's 
trout. Let's see if it gets up there. Uh, it's really, it's really struggling. Yeah, that's not going to cut the mustard, is it? And even since, I mean, it's just a, a slight bump in the field. It's not. I mean, it is, it is, it is weeding, yeah. but yeah, that's going to take forever. So I think instead of doing the, we've got a bit of money. Let's go and see if we can. Um, Buy ourselves a new, slightly more powerful tractor. So we know the farm will pull his equipment fairly easily. So we'll head on back to the to the to the farmyard, and uh, we'll go and look at the dealer and see what they what they've got. I do have some fairly good contacts for buying vintage equipment. So I want something with a slightly decent bit of horsepower. We will eventually get these other for the museum. But right now we need to have a equipment in the museum that we can actually utilize with the equipment that we've got at the present time and still be able to do the job at a reasonable. So that Fiat is 50 horsepower. It's also 50. We can afford it. It's 55. So that's the massy we've got, the 49 or whatever. Right, there, yeah, now we're talking. So we can get that up to 78 horsepower. Uh, the X66, X66DT, I think that might be the... Not sure what the difference is between those. The 66 and the 66DT, I think the DT we can put a cab onto by the looks of things. 60 horsepower on the McCormack bit more expensive. Well that might have been the Massey that we bought. Not sure, we'll have to check that up, but in any case we've got that. So If it is at 60 horsepower then I'm really disappointed that it uh, was struggling with the uh, with the weedy, with the weedy, with the weeder. I think we're going to go for the Fiat. Farmer, we've already got one of those. We don't really want to buy too many duplicates at this point in time. At 68 horsepower, we push that up to cost a little bit more, but yeah, that's fine. Wheel setup, do we have any changes there? Narrow tyres, no, we'll put on normal tyres, standard tyres. Front end loader. Yeah, I think we'll put the cab on so that we can use this in the rain without getting wet. We can use the other vehicles in the rain, we're just going to get a bit wet, that's all. Which farmer has not got wet in their, in their farming life? And I don't think we'll do that just yet. We don't really need a front-end loader just yet. Colors will leave a standard. The attaches will we'll see how it goes without any weights on the front. We we'll probably will eventually have to put weights on the front of it. There it goes in all its glory. It's quite a noisy beast. Oh, it's got a very, very tight, uh, I mean, very, very big turning circle. Oh, come on, you should. So that's going to be the slight drawback of this vehicle is that it's not very easy to turn. But we've got it. It's now in the museum. Looking resplendent. A couple of scuff marks and that type of stuff on it, but... Nothing to be worried about. Okay, see how it pulls that weeder now. So that's a bit of a, 
a bit of a um, oh, what shall we say? It's a bit of a development. We've uh, we've increased our equipment substantially. We funds are down now. We're down to six thousand. We should sometime during the course of this month get um, paid for the workers that we use, used um, during the off season. We did have somebody come in and check up every day and feed the chickens and such like and so we should get that back from the council plus the workers that we utilised yesterday or last month should I say in March with the first contracts that we did yeah that's better look there now we're going at seven miles an hour which is what the speed that we should be doing for this piece of equipment that's great I'll just do this on a time lapse and do the the headlands and then we'll go and get the other fertilizing contracts started and done yeah very happy with this these are noisy beasts though we probably have to get uh, ear, pro ear protectors for our um, for our workers we don't want to be sued for for hearing loss at a later stage or tinnitus or something like that <laughs> so we supply all our workers with with noise protectors right we'll get that onto a worker and get them going and we're going to have a look at the other contracts getting it nice nicely on the the right sort of trajectories but right, I think what we can do is give the the Messi a chance on seeing if it, if it can handle the fertilizer it is not pulling anything through the ground so it may well be able to handle that a little bit easier than or a tiller or a cultivator or a weeder let's just see if this doesn't work then we'll we'll put it out to to show as such or for show well it's always it's always out for show because it's a working museum it picks that up easy enough and now we're going to show you how we can limit our fertilizer costs let's put it this way so if you buy a big bag of fertilizer it costs 1800 euros for a thousand liters but if you buy these small bags they're 50 liters each and they cost 50 euros so that's one pound per liter or one euro per liter Whereas if you buy the big bags, it's 1.8 euros per litre. The downside, of course, is you have to buy a lot of these small bags to fill up the, the spreader. So it's not too much of a problem. We just have to spend a little bit of time doing it. And then we will just go and load up. So I'll just take you through this whole process. So unfortunately, this is not like the big bags where you can order eight at a time. You have to order each one individually. So that takes a, a bit of time. So we have had some delivered. But I think some, because we asked for too much to deliver, is still at the shop. But so this just loads up really quickly like you would load a normal 
well, the same way that you would uh, refill your implement normally works exactly the same except you have to do it for each bag so yeah a little bit more time consuming but it does um, it does save quite a bit of money I worked it out that um, Should I say I will work it out once we've finished the um, just trying to reverse this in here yeah. yeah once we've finished uh, fertilizing we'll see what it would have cost us using a big bag and what it will cost using the small bags see how much how much money we've saved right let's get another few out So I know for sure that there are, because it says that we've already got seven bags and they're not down here. Well, I'll have a look around just after we've done this, um, but I'm pretty sure they're up at the shop, those seven bags. We'll go and have a look once we've done this. Let's get another ten bags here now and uh, load those into the spreader. And that should be plenty to do the fields that we well hopefully that'll be plenty to do the fields that we've needed to that we will need to be done so um, just going to go and have a look and see if there's anything behind this bush no, no it's, yeah it's definitely at the others are definitely at the shop walk through the neighbor's fence <laughs> right let's get it let's get this loaded I think if we just load and load and reverse load and reverse no not forward reverse it's the thing with these old pieces of equipment getting them into the right gear sometimes uh, not, not a major problem but sometimes you well, it's probably just me. Let's <laughs> let's not kid around. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fantastic. So we'll head up to the shop quickly. Quick reminder where the shop was <laughs> and we go left up here should take us right up to the shop uh, it's struggling a little bit there still it's not too bad a little uphill yeah I think the um, well so far we just got to see how it works once we've got it activated or actually spreading, should I say. Um, but it's looking like a light duty vehicle, light duty tractor. For uh, I don't know if you recall when we were doing some of the first harvests, we were using the Massey to pull the trailer full of um, of crop to basically to this point here, was where we offloaded. It was really struggling with the weight of the trailer. And that trailer should easily be pulled by a maybe it's not 60 horsepower we'll, uh, I'll check it up somewhere along the line but in any case we've got two it look, looks like we've got two two walk, workhorse tractors now there's so the bags are there but, yeah. we'll just load these up quickly yeah so sometimes if you order too much and uh, the shop will say, well, no, I can't deliver that all in the price that I've quoted or for free. We'll have to come pick some of it up, which is fair enough. So I think we should have about 1,300 litres of, uh, of fertiliser now. That should be enough to keep us going for a while. Right. Let's 
go and have a look and see. So fertilizing fuel two, six and seven. So those are down going down the bottom. So fuel two, yeah, six and seven. Yeah, so they're in the bottom part of the map. So we'll head on down there now. And let's probably start on field seven. Field five, I think, is a weeding contract. And field 14 is the is where we are weeding at the moment. So we've got a worker weeding up at field 14. So I think if we go right here, then that should bring us a slap bang into field 7. I really like this map. Even though it's a small map, you've still got to keep your wits about you where you're going to for different fields and finding your way around. So this is field 7 directly ahead of us here. It's quite an odd shaped field, I think. We have worked this field before, I think we did a harvest on this field. The other thing is we have, uh, we are in the process of um, training up our workers to be a little bit better in the um, working of the, of the fields and planning the planning the courses to um, to follow when uh, working the different fields because of course they does take a little bit of thought about how to get the field done in the most efficient way so we've got most of them on on courses to learn how to do courses and that should come into play in the next little while. It's probably not in this um, this round of contracts, but maybe in the next round of contracts. It'll give us the ability then to um, to allow our workers to work a little bit more autonomously. Not having to check up on them as, as often. Especially now that we can do quite a few a few more contracts, um, and as we start buying more equipment, and we can do more jobs at once, so we're looking forward to that. And I know the guys that we are training up on that are also looking forward to it. Oops. Yeah. So the Messi is doing okay. It's spreading at the required speed. So this is going to be our fertilizing tractor. Instead of just going out to pasture, it can still be used. And that is great. Because even though we are a museum, we do want the equipment still to be working as far as possible. There will be some that we can't, we can't work, uh, we can't keep working. And there will be, as we get different pieces of equipment, we'll kind of alternate through through the equipment that we have. And giving each piece of equipment a bit of a run. Giving you and the people in the area and the people to the museum the opportunity to see different different machines doing perhaps the same job. That's all in the in the long-term future of the of the museum, I think the intention of the town council is to make the whole town a museum of sorts, and our task is to, of course, handle the agricultural side of it, which we are quite happy to do. Of course, it's a bit of a win-win situation because not only do we make a little bit of money doing the contracting and 
such like, but the town council also um, is able to offer, I wouldn't say vocational, it's not vocational, um, I don't know where I'm going with that train of thought, that's not right, to offer the, the townspeople temporary work basically and, uh, and keep keep people that would um, normally not be employed employed I think I'm in the wrong field here yep we're definitely in the wrong field and why doesn't this messy why is, why is this messy spinning just spinning its wheels let's try again you know what I think I've got the yeah I had the uh, <laughs> the, um, the spreader set down too low so it was catching on the ground sorry Massey I nearly thought that you had been caught out on a slight hill but nope you're quite fine I think we'll uh, set a worker off on this little job here it's fairly straightforward up and down and then we'll nip on back and go and uh, check out on check out the um, the weeding there we go having a good look at the fiat see the limitation in the turning circle of the Fiat though. It does take a bit of manoeuvring. Very square vehicle, but doing okay. Doing okay. A quick look at the uh, the messy spreading. We'll have to we'll have to physically do the. We should have done a headland down at the bottom. It's a bit of rain, which is ideal when you're fertilising because it'll soak the fertiliser into the ground. I like to fertilise in the rain as long as it doesn't churn the field up too much. Right, so we've completed two fertilising contracts and I think we'll uh, just get those into the bank. So field six and seven are finished. I am jumping around a little bit in the jobs because we have seen them just try to visit every one now and again. So while we're still doing that we will uh, I'll just get the payment in I think yeah there we go that's good bank account will be looking a little bit better we've only got the one small weeding contract um, we are getting into the afternoon so maybe not oh there the money has just come in for the for the um, for the workers so that's good Right, let's get this field started. Do that on a worker as well. Get them all set up. Off, off they go. Get a look at the... At the Fiat in, its, uh, in the sunlight. Really happy with the pulling power and the, the Fiat doing quite a good job. As I said, it's, it's a little bit noisy, but uh, that is the nature of old equipment. 
very well built. At least we're not going to get wet in this machine. It's so much easier to see where you're weeding and when you're doing it's just potato sugar sugar beet, I think. Still another exercise in how difficult it is to turn the it's not that bad. The weed is doing a good job as well. We've completely forgot about that. That's a new piece of equipment as well. Perfectly suited to this sort of size operation. The weeding is taking a long time though. Compared to the to the spreading of the fertilizer, of course, it's all got to do with the width of the job that you're doing. And uh, with the weeding, we're doing seven miles an hour, and then the fertilizer, we can do 12 miles an hour. So, from initially being very reluctant to do, to to take on fertilizing contracts, it kind of looks like we're going to be doing them whenever we see them. Because number one, we've been able to find out how to reduce the cost of the fertilizer. And that is going to be quite substantial. Well, I think it's going to be quite substantial. But we will work that out. when we can. Uh, this is just us finishing off the weeding and it's taken us right into into the night and as with uh, all sort of vintage equipment the lights on the Fiat are not great. I think they're a little bit better than the farm wall but um, yeah, so the night work has been fairly difficult. Well, it hasn't been that bad. But in any case, we've completed it all. Take a shortcut down the hill. Oh, that's taking a chance in the dark. Well, here we are, just about at the farm. It's the in-cab view from the... from the um, Fiat. And we'll just park this all off. Start closing up. I think that's probably us done for the day in terms of contracts. Just check up on the chickens, they've got food. Weather's looking okay. Basically what I want to look at is, yeah, I want to go and collect our money. So it's another 650. So we've bought a bit of equipment this, this month. So the bank balance is a little bit lower than when we started. But yeah, we do have a new tractor and weeder. Right, so let's have a look and see. Just want to have a look at that fertilizer costs. So the fertilizer costs have been 1,350. We do have um, about, about 700 odd liters left, which we've put into storage. So we've used about 600 euros worth of fertilizer for the jobs that we've done today. If we had purchased fertilizer a bag, it would have been 1,820. Um, we've utilized 575 liters at 1.8, which would have cost us 1,046 euros. So over a 400, 446 euro saving by using the small bags on the jobs that we've done today in fertilizer. I think that is a victory. And on that victory note, I think that's where we're going to end this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio.